Okay, hello everyone. We're going to be looking at the uh, uh, control theory. So I'm just going to start by So the concept of stability. stability. Okay, consider um, cones. Consider the following cones. You had a cone that looked like this. And you had another cone that is on its apex. And then you have another cone that is lying horizontally. You will consider that this cone is stable. While this one is unstable, as it could fall off once, it, um, once the center of gravity shifts from this axis. And then you can say this is in its equilibrium state. So no matter how you roll it, it's going to remain in that state. We're going to make an assumption that we'll be dealing with um, linear time invariant systems. So linear time invariant systems. So, bracket L T I S. Okay. Now, a system is considered stable if a small change in system input or in initial condition or in a system parameter does not result in a large change in system output. Now, I'm going to give you a few conditions that are required for stability. So, it's a stability conditions for linear time invariant systems. Um, we have one. The output is bounded when the system is excited by a bounded input. Two, the absence of the input, the output, tends towards zero, the equilibrium state of the system, irrespective of initial condition. This is known as its asymptotic stability. Now, I want you to bear in mind that stability of a system refers to its quality of being steady and not changing. In control engineering, almost every working system is designed to be stable. An unstable system obviously cannot perform the control tax required of it satisfactorily. So, hence why we're looking at the concept of stability. However, I'm going to need to introduce you to a few concepts. The concept of poles and zeros. So, um, if you recall that the transfer function of a system uh, looks something like this. So, consider the transfer function. Consider the transfer function. Ts is equals to g of s all over 1 plus g of s h of s. And this is represented as a an equation where the numerator is p of s and the denominator is q of s. We are interested in the denominator because this tells us about uh, this this characteristic equation helps us to determine uh, these two characteristic equations help us to determine the poles and the zeros. So this will help us determine the poles. So in other words, what will make this equation go to ten to was infinity and this is gives us the zeros of this equation. Therefore, uh, Q of S becomes equals to one plus G of S H of S. All right. So this equation one is called the characteristic equation. So 
called is called the characteristic equation it's called the characteristic equation of the system now the roots of these characteristic equations gives us the poles we're going to be using this concept to determine the stability of a system by inspection So let us look at an example. Okay, so let's look at an example. Find the roots of the characteristic equation. So, example one. Example one. Find the roots So find the roots of the characteristic equation of the following systems. Find the roots of the characteristic equations for the following systems. Locate the roots in the S-plane and indicate the stability of each system. So locate the root in the S-plane. And indicate the stability of each system. Okay, so um, the first system is T of S is equals to S plus 2 all over S squared minus 5 S plus 6. And the second system we're going to be looking at is B. So it's G of S, H of S is equals to 1 all over S plus 3 bracket s plus 4 okay solution so let's start with a now if you look at a a is actually the transfer function of a system and this will imply t of s is equals to s plus 2 over s square s square minus 5 s plus 6 so this is we can factorize the denominator so that we're gonna have um i think that should be s minus two by s minus three so if you factor that out and this is equivalent to p of s and q of s recall that the characteristic equation q of uh, is q of s therefore characteristic equation equation q of s is equals to s minus 2 
S minus 3. Now we've been asked to locate the roots in the S plane. Now the S plane is basically your omega your omega plane. So in other words, you're going to have to do um, so the imaginary axis and the real axis. So this is your omega and this is your j omega plane. So the real and the imaginary roots um, components. So as you can see, S is the implication of this. So if you if you solve this, uh, therefore, so which is supposed to be equals to zero. So S, therefore. S would be equals to 2 or 3. So if this is 1, 2, 3, so, so S is going to be this or it's going to be this, where this is 2 and this is 3. Now, the condition for stability is that the, the, um, the value of S when you draw um, when you draw this in the xy plane it should lie on the negative axis of the real plane so it should lie on this side if it's not in this zone then the system is unstable so the region for stability um, so if I'm just going to make another sketch here so 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 where this is your real plane and this is your geomega plane so this region is stable whereas this region is unstable therefore therefore um we can conclude that this equation, uh, therefore, system is unstable. Therefore, system is not just unstable. Okay, let us look at uh, the second part of example one. So let us look at the second part of example one. Just grab one of those there. Okay, so B. So B says G of S H of S is equals to 1 all over s plus 3 and s plus 4. Now recall that q recall that q of s is actually 1 plus g s h s. Therefore um, Q of S for this system is going to be 1 plus 1 all over S plus 3 bracket S plus 4 will be equals to 0. So the implication is therefore equals to so 1 all over S plus 3 
that s plus 4 is equal to minus 1. Therefore, uh, 1 is equal to s plus 3, bracket s plus 4, which, um, okay, minus of that. So, which is equal to s uh, minus s square minus 4s minus 3s so minus 12 okay um so another way to to uh, to put this would just be s square minus uh, s square plus 7s so minus 12 becomes plus then um, so plus 13 is equals to 0 so we can try to solve this um, by uh, punching that into a calculator so that you can get the root straightforward um, or you can solve that using the um, almighty formula whichever method you want but you will find out that um, from so by by um, from calculator or using the almighty formula whichever method um, you'll find out that S1 will be equal to minus 3.5 plus J 0.866 and S2 will be equal to say minus 3.5 minus J 0.866 so um right and in case you need a reminder of the formula for calculating these um you can just use um so s would be equals to minus b plus or minus the root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2a of course that's making the assumption that your a is 1, uh, b is 7, and c is 13. Okay, let's plot the graph of this um, on the s plane. So, plotting on the s plane, so plotting on the s plane. So we need to draw our real and imaginary um, axis. So imaginary j omega axis and uh, so um, sigma and j omega. Okay. So now um, minus three point five will be somewhere here. So minus 3.5, so the real part. Now we have plus 0 0.866. And 0 0.866, so this would be on the real line, somewhere up there. So 0 0.866. And then we will have something here that will be minus, minus 0 0.866. So um, you'll expect that this should join somewhere here. So we've got our first root up there. And then you've got your second root up there. 
Now, since the system, since the roots of the characteristic equation lie all lies on the left hand plane of the real axis the uh, the system is stable so this system is stable we will we'll now move on to looking at how to determine the stability of a system by inspection okay so we're going to be looking at stability by inspection so All right, stability by inspection. Now, the necessary, though not sufficient condition for stability of a system is A, if all the coefficients of the characteristic equation, so if all the coefficients of the characteristic equation of a system have the same sign have the same sign and what that means is uh, we've got all positive or all negative okay so and none is zero in other words no missing no missing coefficient and none is zero so no missing coefficient then the system then the system is likely to be stable note that I said earlier that the necessary but not necessarily sufficient so the necessary do not sufficient condition for the stability of a system is this hence we're saying the system is likely to be stable we're not saying for sure it is confirmed unstable all right b if the coefficients have different signs the coefficients have different signs so let's go if the coefficients have different signs signs so this is basically a mixture of positive and negative coefficients and or some of the coefficients are zero so some of the coefficients uh, zero so that is um, we have missing coefficients um, then the system is 
confirmed to be unstable. So we can be sure that a system is unstable by mere inspection, but we can only um, um, consider a system to be likely or probably stable um, by mere inspection. In order to be able to guarantee or um, confirm stability, we might need to try some other techniques which you will be introduced to in subsequent, um, subsequent lectures. All right, so let us consider some examples. So example, uh, let's call this example two. Okay, example two. So we say, by mere inspection, by mere inspection, by mere inspection, comment on the stability of the system. of the systems whose characteristic equation are given below. Okay, so um, A we have s raised to the power of 6 plus 5 s raised to the power of 5 plus 3 s raised to the power of 3 plus s square plus 5 is equals to 0. So b um, we have S6 plus 5S raised to the power 5 plus S raised to the power 4 minus S raised to the power 3 plus S squared minus 6S plus 5 is equals to 0. Okay, C. We have s raised to the power of 6 plus 5s raised to the power of 5 plus s raised to the power of 4 plus 3s raised to the power of 3 plus s square plus 6s plus 5 is equals to 0. And we have d minus s raised to the power of 6 minus s raised to the power of 5 minus s raised to the power of 4 minus s raised to the power of 3 minus s raised to the power of 2 minus 6s minus 5 is equals to 0. Okay, let me try a different um, pen so that I can put the solutions in a different color. So, solution. So I'm just going to put the solution on this side. So, this system, the first system. So this system, you can consider this system, um, is this system stable or unstable? So remember, the condition for stability by inspection is that all the signs must be um, the same. So either they are all positive or they are all negative. Um, and secondly, um, there must be no missing term. So in other words, there's no term with which the coefficient is zero. So if you look at this, we've got six, we've got five, but the coefficient of s raised to the power of four is missing. And automatically that tells us that this system is unstable. And if you look again, you will notice that there's also the coefficient of s raised to the power of 1 is also missing. So, which means system, the system 
is unstable. Why is it unstable? We have missing coefficients. So missing S4 and S um oh, oh, sorry so um missing x4 and s that is their coefficients are zero okay if we look at the second one so we have six five four three two one zero so um, all the terms are present however there is a change in sign uh, for s raised to power 3 and there's a change in size for minus 6 s raised to power 3 so again this system so the system is unstable so the system is unstable so and this is sign change okay so let's look at this other one so s six five four three two one zero and positive 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 so they're all positive and no um coefficient is zero there's no missing term so um we can see again in this context the system this system the system is stable and this final system again it has six five four three two one zero all the terms are present all of them are negative um the system is stable so and the reason why all the system is stable is because all coefficients have the same sign all coefficients have the same sign and no zero coefficient in other words all the terms are present Okay, so we're going to um, stop this um, session here. We'll continue with um, with Horowitz stability criterion, and we'll look at root stability criterion, and also we um, we will try and see if we can look at um, the determining stability of a system using. Um, root locus. So um, the next three methods we're going to be looking at will help us to be sure about the stability of the system. Actually, um, what we're supposed to say here is this system is is likely likely stable, and so I can say this one too is likely stable. Now this is very important that we indicate that the system is likely stable the reason is that um, we can't say for sure that the system is stable so this likely stable likely stable applies however the next three methods we're going to be looking at will help us to determine uh, for sure that the system is stable or not thank you for watching see you next time bye